Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel and today I'm doing another interview. My guest today has recently toured the UK on the Greece tour. They played a major role of Kaniki and today they're going to be coming on and telling us more about themselves, what it was like being on the tour and about their acting career as well. So today Paul French will be joining me. Hello, I'm Paul and I was um, Kaniki in the Greece UK tour. Thank you so much for coming, Paul. So today we're going to be talking about what it was like being in Greece and also about your acting career. So my first question is, when did you first get into acting? I've always kind of um, enjoyed acting. I uh, I did it as a child. Uh, just, you know, like Amjam groups, you know, when you'd go to lessons at the weekend and just um, put on a show. So I've always kind of done that growing up. Um but I only really started taking it seriously when um, I'd say I was about 16. My uh, secondary school dance teacher pulled my parents in for a meeting and was like, I don't think Paul's chance of getting um, into back into sixth form is too high because I wasn't the, uh, I wasn't the smartest. So she just told my parents to uh, look up these drama schools. Um, so we... So she told us about uh, Italia Conti, the three-year diploma from 16, and um, Arts Ed Sixth Form. And so I auditioned for both of those, uh, got into both, and then chose the three-year one at Conti. And yeah, so started properly at 16 when I started training. Oh, fantastic. It sounds like it was quite a journey getting up to the point of 16. And it's amazing that you got into both of those drama schools and it was good that you got to pick what one you wanted to go to. So one recent thing you've done is obviously Greece, which was a UK tour. But before we talk about what it was like being on tour, what was it like actually auditioning for that? The audition process for Greece was actually really quick. I started on the Monday because Arlene Phillips, the choreographer, watched our third year musical where we did Saturday Night Fever. And so she pulled uh, a bunch of us from my year, uh, which was actually nice because it was my first professional audition. And so everyone in the audition was from my, like most people in the room were my classmates, which I trained with for the past three years. So it was a really nice environment. Um, so yeah, started on the Monday, then recall on the Tuesday, recall on the Wednesday, and they were all cuts throughout the day. I had a day off Thursday and I think the finals were on Friday and I found out that night. So it was all one week process, super quick. Oh, that's fantastic. And within the audition, what did you do? Did you have to do like acting, singing and dancing? Yeah, I had to do all three. It was mainly uh, dancing. It was dancing through all the rounds to the final. Did you see Grease? Yeah, I came and watched it in Southampton. Yeah, it was very, very good. Thank you. It was uh, so it's quite a dancey show, as you know. And uh, so, yeah, there was quite a lot of dance rounds. It's quite a specific style of the show. It's, um, there's a lot of jive, which you have to get a certain rhythm, certain groove. So it was dance heavy. And then if you got to the final, you had to sing a song and you had to do a monologue written by yourself for the character that you're up for. Oh, well, that's definitely like a different thing to do within an audition that you like had to write something, which is really cool. The, the director who did uh, Grease, Nikolai, that's very unique to him. He does that for all of his shows. Yeah, that definitely is unique. It's very interesting. And I think it kind of helps you get into the character as well, having to kind of write what they would say. Yeah, I, I, um, I really enjoy that, actually, because as an actor, you you love like creative freedom. It's what you kind of want. So to be able to go into a room and like say to them script that you feel your character would say is quite a unique opportunity. And so it's fun to do it that way. And it's also quite different from like normal auditions. So it sounds really fun. And with the dancing, did you get to work with Arlene Phillips for the audition? Yep, Arlene was there for the auditions. She um, she would get up after like we did each round and uh, tell us like what we can uh, add to it to get the uh, style a bit better. And uh, her amazing assistant, Richard Rowe, would uh, teach us the... Uh, teach us the actual choreo and then Arlene would um, 
yeah, just tell us what to do and don't do, basically. Oh, that's great. And I think it's good how they gave you feedback as well. So, like, the next time they like that you come in, you can improve. Yeah, for sure. Um, Arlene's very up on her feet kind of choreographer. Like, she's always um, very interactive in the process. So, she won't just sit there and watch. Do you know what I mean? She's um, always up on her feet giving us tips and tricks for what to do. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. And I think it kind of ups the energy of the people auditioning as well so where would you see yourself in terms of your acting career in five years time five years time i'd like to maybe do some screen work in that time uh, i'm a massive cinema geek i love films always have um so i would love to do tv do film at some point but also, live theatre is definitely what I love. It's always been what I love. The uh, buzz of a live audience. So I'd still love to still be doing theatre as well. <clears throat> Maybe, um, yeah, I'd still doing shows in maybe the West End or regional or still on tour. But just, uh, I guess, a different age bracket of roles. Yeah, I, I think screen and being on stage, like you said, have two very different atmospheres. So I think it like do it still doing both in the future is definitely a good way to go. Yeah, and also what I love about stage, which you don't get on screen or film, is it's one continuous run. So from so from the start with when you start the show to the end of the show, you get to carry that emotion throughout the whole entire show. You get to run, you get to get the momentum. You get to run with it. You feel like you're in it. But with TV and film, it's very stop and starty. So it'll be like, look to this camera and be crying, and now look back to this camera and be in an argument. Do you know what I mean? There's no, there's no flow, which is what um, what I love so much about theatre is you get to tell the story and you're actually in the story from start to finish, which I love. Yeah, I agree. And I think that's kind of one of the main things which separates them, which is why some people like both, some people like one. And I think that's um, one thing that definitely divides them. So do you have any advice to somebody who would like to get into acting? I would say go and see as much theatre as you can. Because I was lucky in the sense as a child, I had a lot of access to theatre. Um, my dad is a drama teacher and he loves theatre as well so he'd go a lot um, and I would just go with him he and he's um, he's into more plays than musicals so um, not only did I go see musicals that I loved maybe like my mum or my sisters <clears throat> I'd also get to see some really cool plays as well with my dad and that's seeing the other side of theatre as well different styles I went to the the Fringe, in Edinburgh, the Fringe um, Festival. And yeah, so you just go and see so much theatre because then you get to see what you like and don't like about actors and you can take bits, do you know what I mean? And just kind of, yeah, that's what I'd say if you want to become an actor. Go see as much theatre as you possibly can, which is how much is accessible, which I know the ticket prices is easier said than done, but yeah, that's what I'd say. Yeah, that is some good advice because I feel like when you go and watch something live, you do take it in even if you don't know you are. So I think the more you see, the more you will learn and take in without knowing it. Yeah, I, I remember like when I was younger, sitting like in an auditorium and like seeing, I see like an amazing male dancer and I'd be like, wow, I, like, I want to do what he's doing kind of thing. And then you just pick up like niche little things, like little nuances that they would do on stage. And, be like, and you'd be like, oh, I love that. And then you put that into your own performance and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like everybody picks up everything, even if they like go to an audition and see somebody else audition, they pick things up from that as well. What was it like auditioning for Saturday Night Fever? Saturday Night Fever was a slightly longer process than um, Greece. It's more traditional in the sense that I had one round, one week. The second round would be the following week kind of thing. It was a bit more spaced out. I was also auditioning for that whilst in Greece. So there were a lot of early mornings. Um, I was in Liverpool for the first round 
So a bunch of us, there's a bunch of us going to auditions. And um, we got on like the five o'clock train from Liverpool to make it to London for the for the call. And then we had to go back to Liverpool that day and do the show in the evening. And it was the same the following week in Cardiff as well. We had to travel from Cardiff to London. So, yeah, it was um, a lot of travelling for, uh, for the auditions, but it was worth it. Yeah, it does sound like it was a very busy day and it sounds really tiring having to audition in the morning and then performing in the afternoon. It sounds like that was definitely a hard couple days. Yeah, it was. it's all part and parcel, to be honest. I feel like every performer, every performer goes through that. It is a lot, but the shows in the evening are so much in your body. There's so much muscle memory that you you can still pull it out of the bag, even with doing auditions in the day. The show will always be there in your body. Yeah, I guess because you're kind of so used to doing it. And it's kind of like, it's kind of like memory foam. It kind of like every time you do it, it just gets like, it remembers it more and more. Yeah, for sure. You, you could probably ask me to do Greece right now. And even though I haven't done it in like what, since the first week of December, and it's now the first week, so I haven't done it in about a month. I could still, for no reason that long, but I could still definitely whip out of the show. It's always there. Yeah, it's a really cool thing to have, like, when you do shows for a long time. So, is there anybody who you feel inspired by or you look up to in acting? Yes, I... My favourite actor... I have a lot of favourite actors, but one which really stands out is Tom Hardy. He does a lot of roles which I'd like to do. That kind of... area of film is what I'd like to parts he plays um and yeah the the way he plays them as well just makes me want to play those types of parts even more so have you seen Legend the film about the Craze twins have you seen that film no I haven't seen it explain it quickly uh so it's about the Craze twins which were like a gangster gangster twins in the in the East End in like the I don't know 60s maybe I don't know the year but he plays them both. He plays both twins. And like, when I saw that film, it, I was blown away. <clears throat> it definitely made me want, like really start thinking about screen when I saw that film. There's that this scene where he literally gets in a fight with himself. It's CGI. But both twins fight each other and he's literally playing both twins. It's incredible. So yeah, I'd like to say Tom Hardy, <clears throat> mainly because of the... The way he plays the parts that I'd love to play and the fact that he plays the parts I'd love to play. Just, um, yeah, him. And also, in a musical theatre sense, I just recently... Um, I played a little uh, part in um, a new f uh, musical feature film that's coming out this this year. It's called Tomorrow Morning, starring Samantha Barks and Ramin Karimloo. Uh, I just played a barman with a few lines. But at the rap party for the film, I sat down with Ramin and um, told him about Greece that was coming out. And he gave me some great advice. And I've always loved Ramin's work. He's played like The Phantom, um, Valjean, all of those great parts. And so to get advice firsthand from him was incredible as well. So I've always I look up to him as well. Yeah, well, those two people do sound amazing. And it's also great that you got to meet um, the last one you were talking about at that party and that they kind of pushed you and inspired you for Greece. So my next question is from one of my friends called Georgia who came and watched you in Greece. And she wanted me, first of all, to tell you that you were the best Kaniki she, she's ever seen. That's very sweet. Thank you. But she wanted to know, uh, what is the most challenging part of being part of the professional acting world? Uh, it's cliche, but I guess it's like there's <clears throat> like 500 no's to every yes. Um, there's a lot of actors out there, not many roles. Um, and in an audition process, you can really get invested in a part that you're so close to getting. So, I mean, you're told not to do this, but it's natural. So you'll always start, like the further you get into an audition process, you'll start like seeing yourself as that part and you'll start imagining your life whilst doing the show or something like that. And you can get so close, you can get to like the final like handful and then it will go to someone else and you just got to move on, on to the next. So I guess in that sense, it's um, it's quite cutthroat. And also, 
when you get employed, it's like, oh, okay, great, I've got to, I've got work. But then it's not like any other job where you'll have like a a job until you don't want that job. Do you know what I mean? We you have a job for like six months, a year, sometimes less. Like some there's some shows that are like six week runs, and so it's very bitty work as well, which um is hard because you spend a lot. You do spend a lot of time out of work as an actor. Um, and yeah, so I'd say that. Yeah, well, I think like those definitely are some struggles within the acting world, but I think it's kind of reassuring that everybody kind of goes through it together, though. Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure. I mean, obviously, there's actors that go from job to job to job, <clears throat> but I mean, the majority we are you can have like sometimes people have like years in between um, certain jobs. I've been lucky so far, but I've only really left drama school. I graduated in 2020, so I've still got... I've been... Well, I, well, I had, well obviously I had the year, year and a half out, but that was the first lockdown. So everyone, everyone, everyone was going through that. But there's definitely... Uh, all actors know, like, and we're there for each other in the sense that it's not easy being in and out of work. For sure. Yeah, definitely. So my next question is about Greece. So obviously we talked about what it was like auditioning for Greece, but what was it like playing Kinnicky on the tour? Because obviously Kinnicky is one of the most iconic roles in Greece. Yeah, it was fun. It was so much fun. Um Yeah, Gre uh, Greece is obviously very famous um for the film. So you don't want to let anyone down when when you're doing your your version of Kinnicky. Um yeah, Kinnicky was so much fun. It, it's it's not often you get parts like that. So when you do get them, it's yeah, it's great. And there's a lot of um there's a lot of creative freedom I guess with playing a a student in a high school because it's just energy, energy, and like your mischievous kids. Do you know what I mean? And um, so you you get that you get that room to just like play and stuff, which, as I said, as an actor, is like the dream. <clears throat> and uh, obviously, I wanted to like show respect to the ca the Kaniki from the film, which everyone was expecting. So I'd have my nuances to that, but also it wasn't carbon copy the same. My Kaniki was slightly different, I'd say, to most. I played it maybe a little bit more darker, a bit more intimidating maybe than the usual, but I still tried my best to keep in um, certain, as I say, yeah, nuances from the, the Kinnicky from the film that everyone knows and loves. It's about, for me, anyway, getting like a fine balance of your one and their one uh, to keep everyone happy. Yeah, well, it sounds like Greece definitely was fun and that you also got to incorporate your own ideas into your character as well. So for somebody who is going to be playing Kinnicky, what advice would you give to them? I'd say... it The, the camaraderie between the T-Birds, or in my version was the Burger Palace Boys, the um, that is that was so important in our one. Like us five boys were so close, and we always like we you, we felt so safe on stage because you knew if uh, one of you was to fall, then the other one's got you. And like we always trusted each other so much that we could always play and do different things. So I'd just say if you're if you're going to play Kinnicky, then get close with the Danny. Like like get close with all the all the boys in the group because. If you're friends off stage and you can take that on stage, it honestly will show. Like, um, and that helped me so much because it was my first job as well, and I was uh, around the the guy who played Duty, for example. He's an absolute veteran. Like, his his CV goes on and on and on. And he, when you know you've got someone like, and the Danny as well, when you know you've got someone like that, you just feel so safe. And. It will show in your performance as well. So I just say, yeah. Yeah, 
Well, that's definitely some good advice for somebody who wants to play that character. And I think it is always important that you trust who you're on stage with and that you also, like you said, feel safe because I think the audience can show, tell. What would you say has been the best moment in your career or best job? Best job? Well, I've only really done one. Sunlight Fever hasn't opened yet, but um, so, but yeah, opening night, opening night for for Greece was a really special moment. Not only was I making my debut, but it was a long time coming because I I got the job when I was nineteen, and I finished it when I was twenty one. So it's, it's really been a part of my life for about two years, um, and obviously because of because of COVID, we got to do, we got to do it a year and a half later and so to finally like take that bow and say you've done it after all that wait and anticipation was it was a really good moment and also making my debut as well it was a mix of both but that was a really great night yeah yeah it does sound like that was a really good night and it just sounds like like you were saying because of covid it sounded like it was a long time coming and it sounds like it was really fun for everybody to do it was yeah it was special for everyone yeah, it definitely does sound fun. We have came to the last question of the interview and I just wanted to ask this one to kind of any interview on a fun note. So do you have like any funny moments from Greece or any other things you've done in your career? There was this one show in Woking where, I guess, is this funny? Okay, I want to tell it. Um, there was this one show in Woking where, so when you get to a new venue on tour, you do like a, a get in. So you just quickly space the, the show in a new in a new venue uh and then you'll have a, a dinner break and then you go back and do the show so we got to uh, we got to the theater in working we did our dry tech broke at about half five and went and had dinner and i don't know why but me and my friend alex thought it'd be a good idea to go <clears throat> and get three sides for like it's, it's because it was cheap we were just being cheap it was like three sides for like under ten pounds at Spoons, so it was like these chicken wings, these battered prawns, and like I don't know, like chips or something. So we went and had that, and literally as soon as we left Spoons, my tummy was feeling really weird. I was like, okay, maybe I just didn't eat enough or something. I'm still hungry, uh, so I just kind of put it in the back of my mind without going into too much detail. I was on the toilet a lot, let's say, going up to the half hour call. Uh, and I was like, yeah, there's definitely something dodgy about those prawns at, um, uh, uh, spoons. If my car see this, they're going to laugh. They call me prawn French. My name's Paul French. Um, and so, yeah, they were really not sitting well in my stomach. And anyway, but I was like, I'm just going to go on. So I did, I did the show. No, I did the, I did the, well, I was going through the, stumbling through the first act and it was getting worse and worse. And I was like, I really do not feel great. And like, I was starting to like, kind of go a bit like lightheaded and like, I felt I was there, but I wasn't really there. And so it got to the scene before, scene before um, the end of act one, which is we go together. And I knew that I had to go on stage, say like three lines and then do the number. But I just, I thought, let me just go on, say the three lines so I haven't disrupted anything so that no one's like lost on stage. Let me just go on, get those three lines out somehow. And then I said to my stage manager, Paul Duffy, he was incredible. I was like, get the toilet door open because I'm about to be sick. So I, 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 I literally ran on stage, like shouted out my three lines out as quick as possible, turned around, ran off, straight into the toilet and out came the prawns. It was rough. That's quite a graphic story. I don't know if that's funny, but yeah, there it is. Yeah, well, that sounds quite tragic. I, that sounds really horrible. So did you go back on? No, that was me done for that night. My um, my first cover did the second act. Oh, wow. So you must have been really ill. I did. It didn't go... It, yeah, it kind of spiralled from there. Didn't go too well that night. But I was back on the next day. Too shit, eh? Warrior. Oh, good. Well, at least it didn't last for too long, but it does sound like it was horrible at the moment. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't great. Yeah, well, um, for, thank you for that story. And that does conclude the interview. So I just wanted to say thank you so much for taking the time to come and do it. No worries, mate. Thank you for having me. It was great fun. Oh, you're welcome. And also thank you to everybody who watched it. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you soon for another interview. Bye, guys.